There are four great kings, and these kings come out of Buddhist mythology. They come out of the, uh, the narratives and the life stories of the Buddha Shakyamuni and are very much related to the moment when he reached enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. So we, we've talked a little bit about Vaishravana, uh, but we've not talked about the others. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Virupaksha just a little bit. Now, to really, uh, to really work with, with the four guardian kings, you really have to divide up the, the, uh, the subjects of, 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 uh, and the main topics. Uh, this is really the most important thing. So, really, we have uh, we have the subject itself, Virupaksha, and who he is, and then we have the characteristics of Virupaksha. Then we have um, context. What are the contexts in which he is found in art? And then we have art styles, and then we have masterworks. This is it. The, these these are, are really the handles. These are the, the topics. These are the subjects. This is how you understand the, the Guardian Kings. So with, with Virupaksha, he's special because he is the king, the guardian of the West. And uh, the West here doesn't mean just the, um, the uh, Western direction, the infinity of the Western direction. It actually means he, he resides on the Western side of Mount Sumeru, the mountain at the middle of a small uh, world system. Now, uh, we have the characteristics. So generally in art, the four guardian kings have the appearance uh, of uh, being a king. They, they have uh, very thick clothing, very layered, very colorful crowns, jewels, uh, armor. Uh, they can be standing or they can be seated, and this is for, for painting or, or sculpture. Uh, Virupaksha is often red, but colors are, are actually not so important. Body colors are not so important for these uh, four guardian kings. Now, his uh, two main attributes, which are important because this is uh, how you recognize him uh, in, within the group of four, is he is holding a stupa, uh, usually upraised slightly in his right hand, and a snake or a serpent of some type in his left hand. Uh, now, he is also the, the sort of the lord, being in this western direction and, and uh, being one of the kings on the, on the slopes of Mount Sumeru. Uh, he is the king or lord over all of the Nagas, uh, from all of the, the locations where Nagas live in the animal realm and the human realm. Then we have... Uh, we have to mention just briefly that there are two main styles of iconography. Now, I, I mentioned that kings, uh, that uh, the four guardian kings generally have king appearance, uh, and that's true, but uh, from about the, the 18th century, then it was, um, um, it became common to sometimes find the four kings painted in a peaceful appearance, like they're peaceful deities. And uh, a lot of this influence was really driven by Situ Pension in, in East Tibet. He believed because the four guardian kings come out of, uh, out of India, then they should, be, they should look like Indian deities, not Chinese deities. Um, okay, then the context. The context for uh, Virupaksha is the four guardian kings belong to the system of Shakyamuni, two principal disciples, and the the 16 elders. So we find that in painting and sculpture. Then we find uh, for the Mahayana system, we find that the uh, four guardian kings are painted uh, at the entrance to uh, temples on the outside, uh, on either side of the door. Then within a Vajrayana context, we find that the four guardian kings can be uh, found as secondary uh, figures in, in the retinue of a mandala. So they're, they're in the outer uh, circles, or they could be the, the doorkeepers or gatekeepers for the palace within the mandala. So these are the three main contexts. Now, to understand the uh, uh, art styles, then we have to be looking at chronology and region uh, for the four kings. And for masterworks, then we have to look at each individually and look at the, at the great sets that were created uh, for each of the kings.